What's up guys, Leopold the Brave here, and today, for the month of fictional fights, we are going to be talking about the rules that I've chosen for the show. Now there are very there are three very specific rules that I've chosen uh, that you can see at the beginning of every episode. No prep time, no outside help, non-canon events are allowed as long as they don't contradict the canon, you know that stuff, yada yada yada. But there are also like some extra like hidden behind the scenes rules that I keep for the production of the show. But first, let's go over the main three rules that I've chosen. No prep time is obvious, because there's no way these characters would know each other, and even if most of these characters did know each other, they'd most likely not even fight. Because usually, most of the time, it's protagonist versus protagonist. I mean, there's no way Jin and Ryu would fight each other, unless it was like sparring for training or something, or there's no way Danny Phantom and Jake Long would fight each other. <laughs> they'd probably be friends. So yeah, no prep time makes a lot of sense. It's a rule that most versus debates follow. Plus, if they had Batman, it would become OP because once Batman knows someone's weakness, he can destroy them with that weakness. Like, just, he'll take full advantage of that. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. The next one is no outside help unless it's a major part of a character. I mean, I see it happen in versus debates where they say no outside help and then they have, like, something in there that kind of counts as outside help. But... And some people notice it, like... Bayonetta and Death Battle using Madama Butterfly. I mean, that could technically be con considered using outside help. But it's a major part of Bayonetta's character, so I included it. I'm sure Death Battle does that too. Has that rule too, where they do allow it if it's a major part of a person's character. But they just don't say it. I make sure to be more specific and say it, though, so people actually know. What that rule is because it makes sense I mean it's it's like part of their standard equipment like Link always has his sword but he always also ha always has Navi so Navi could be considered a major part of his character and Navi could figure stuff out for him so yeah but then Navi left so never mind never mind <laughs> forget Navi she left but you, you all get what I'm saying, right? Like, Crash Bandicoot has his Wampa Fruit Bazooka, that's standard equipment, but then he has Aku Aku, who is a character that's a major part of his character, so... That technically isn't considered outside help, since Aku Aku is always with him, protecting him from damage and all that stuff. And the third rule, no non-canon events, unless, it's, unless it is not contradicted by the main canon. Because usually, um, non-canon events showcase a lot of what the character's potential could be. I mean, non-canon is sub something that didn't happen. But just because it didn't happen doesn't mean it couldn't happen. So, that's that's what I think about, like, non-canon events. But I do try and avoid it the best I can if it contradicts the main canon, because then it just makes no sense. Like, crossovers, basically. Crossovers definitely contradict the main canon. Like, Smash Bros, that totally contradicts, like, the Zelda timeline. So yeah, I'm not including that. <laughs> but, things like Street Fighter Cross Tekken, that would probably be okay, since it's specific to that franchise. Like, Street Fighter Cross Tekken, it's specific to Tekken, so I will allow it for Tekken characters. But, stuff like Project X-Zone, that's a crossover for multiple characters, including Tekken, but it's not Tekken-specific, so I wouldn't include that crossover. If I did, then... <laughs> Jin would be multiverse level from scaling to Cosmos, or Cosmos, however you pronounce it, I don't know her. All I know is she's multiverse level. <laughs> so if I included crossovers, Jin would be multiverse level from scaling to her. Mm, so yeah, that's why that's why I don't include non-canon events if they contradict the canon. Crossovers and stuff, that's bad. Now the rules behind the scenes that really aren't part of the show, but I still use. Um... One of them is, dead, dead characters cannot return, but every year on my birthday, I'm going to have, like, some sort of Shenron Dragon Ball thing where they can wish back a deceased character, where the viewers can vote back someone who has died in the show. Last year, they voted, it was a tie between Goku and Danny Phantom. Goku's opponent has been revealed, and I'll be sure to do that fight soon. And I still haven't thought of a new fight for Danny Phantom. But yeah. The next rule is make sure to keep referencing past episodes because Death Battles contradicted themselves a bit, so I reference old episodes to make sure I don't do the same. 
like they did with Dragon some of the Dragon Ball episodes, they contradict themselves. Ah, uh, Ryu just killed himself. And the last rule is one I got rid of, was if a character returns, they have to fight a stronger opponent. But I got rid of that rule when, when I realized that strength is all that matters, because people have different things, like different arsenals, different speeds to help them out, so... When a character returns, they don't have to fight someone that was stronger than the opponent they fought before. But yeah, those are the rules of fictional fights. Hope you enjoyed learning about them, and see you later.